Moving on to item number eight, hearing on the disciplinary complaint or in the alternative, a hearing on proposed adjudication agreement from mixed martial, mixed martial artist Cody McKenzie. And good morning, Mike Tedmer from the Attorney General's Office on behalf of Executive Director Bob Bennett. Um, in the matter of Cody McKenzie, um, on or about October 1st, 2018, the Executive Director filed a disciplinary complaint against the respondent, Cody McKenzie. Uh, Administrative Assistant 3, Michelle Carrow with the AG's office, uh, served that complaint on the respondent by regular certified mail on that same day. Uh, and, they, and it was since he was at 2018, to the address provided in his 2018 license application. Uh, petitioner's proposed exhibit one um, is an affidavit of Ms. Francis Mason, uh, management and Al analyst two for the commission, uh, which authenticates and establishes service of the notice of hearing and notice of complaint uh, for this hearing, which was served on respondent by regular and certified mail on October 19, 2018, and is attached here in as proposed exhibit two. Um, with that, I would move to admit exhibits one and two into the record. So uh, what exhibits one and two establish is that the complaint was properly served per NAC 467.922. Um, and the respondent had adequate time to answer for NAC 467.920 and 924. Uh, before I go any further, I do not see Mr. McKenzie in the audience. Uh, so with that, I, I would make a motion, excuse me, uh, pursuant to NAC 467.924 that the allegations as provided within the complaint be deemed as true. So admitted. With the allegations having been admitted, uh, as stated in the complaint, uh, what is established is that you know, on September 14, 2018, prior to his contest at, at the Orleans Hotel, um, he was given a valid request by a commission representative to provide a urine sample for his ballot. Uh, but the respondent, Mr. McKenzie, refused and declared that he was going to go to his room um, and would not provide a sample until it was closer to his ballot. That when, Mr. when the respondent did return and provide a sample, the sample itself registered as abnormally high, uh, in temperature that is. When he was confronted about this, he made several representations, including that um, if this, quote unquote, um, got out, he would lose his job, um, as well as an admission that he had smoked pot that day, pot being marijuana. Uh, when the respondent was asked if he had anything hidden on his person, he at first denied it, uh, but upon further questioning, he ultimately relinquished from his clothing a bottle of urine substitute. Uh, this bottle, which he had concealed on his, his, on his person, in his, in his, in his clothing, um, it was capped with a nozzle, uh, which would allow its liquid, content, liquid contents to be streamed from it. Um, the bottle itself contained a warm yellow tinted liquid um, that matched the contents of the false sample he provided. Um, additionally, the bottle had a hand warmer secured to it by a rubber band. Um, this conduct by the respondent not only is an anti-doping violation, but it also violates other regulations within that the commission that governs the commission. Um, with that, we would submit. Okay, so submit. So basically, in plain English, we had a, a fighter contestant try to skirt the, the drug testing process and cheat by providing somebody else's urine. That is correct, Chairman. And he got caught. That is also correct, Chairman. And he's no no call, no show this hearing, or you, or uh, anybody else. I have made multiple attempts to contact Mr. McKenzie. Um, you know, as, even as going so far as to contemplate a proposed settlement agreement, um, that those efforts have failed. And I, well, I canvassed the canvassed the room. I did not canvass the telephone. Uh, whether or not he called in, but even if he did, um, he does he, he didn't file an answer. Um, he didn't get a waiver for non-appearance. So even if he was on the phone, I would still make a motion to for, out for the allegations to be deemed true pursuant to NAC 467.924, subsection 4. Yeah, for, this would, this would definitely require, as they all do, a waiver uh, for myself to waive the hearing, and we would not do that, so. Um, how do we proceed forward to make sure we have the, the proper record here? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would advise that the commission simply uh, motion uh, to find the respondent in default of the facts as alleged by uh, the Deputy Attorney General. And then you could also uh, make a separate motion on the violations of law um, and then the discipline uh, to be imposed. So you make three separate motions. Um, okay, so why don't you guide us through, I, I don't have any objection to that, I think that's appropriate. So why don't you guide us through number one, we need to, a motion to find the respondent in default of the facts as alleged by the Deputy Attorney General. Okay. 
So I make a motion to find the respondent in default of the facts presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Okay, so moving on to second recommended motion. Uh, you'd have to uh, make a motion on the violations of law next, and then third would be the discipline. Get to the discipline. Okay. All right. So I need a motion on the on the violations of law. I'd make a motion uh, on the violations of law. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. So now we'll move on to um, the disciplinary action. What is the regulation for? Uh, this is basically akin to skirting a test, not taking the test, uh, and then trying to cheat it. So there's kind of two things going on here. That is correct, uh, Chairman. So right. um, as alleged, as an anti-doping violation, um, and like, once again, as alleged in the complaint, the penalty can range from 12 months to 24 months, and that's just for the anti-doping violation. However, also for the commission's consideration is potentially aggravating circumstances. Um, I need to actually look at the statute number. It's uh, NAC 467.581. Um, if the commission were to find there to be aggravating circumstances in this case, you can increase the penalty, uh, basically double it. So where there's a two-year penalty for the anti-doping violation, you can go an additional two years if the, if the commission finds aggravating circumstances. Aggravating circumstances can include multiple anti-doping violations which occurred at the same time or near the same time. Uh, a violation of the regulations. Um, the refusal to give a sample that not only constitutes a violation of the regulations in general, specifically NAC 467.885, uh, but it, it also can include an anti-doping violation as a um, licensee is obligated to test when asked. Um, and another aggravating circumstance, circumstance would be the person who committed the anti-doping violation engaged in deceptive or obstructive conduct to avoid detection of an anti-doping violation. There are, this is not an exclusive list, NAC 467.581, gives just examples of what can constitute aggravating circumstances. So that being said, the commission has within its discretion for the anti-doping violation uh, to render a sentence, a suspension that would include 12 months to 24 months, as well as if it finds aggravating circumstances, an additional up to two years. Okay. Uh, as far as a fine goes, this is another circumstance where there was no fine, therefore no purse, therefore no purse fine. Uh, but we would, there is a request though that uh, attorney fees be added to whatever sentence the commission does yield, if it does in fact, um, that would be $944.84. And the standard penalties including the drug testing, 30, 15, and three days out for drugs of abuse, um, as well as steroids and diuretics. And that's if he, that's if he seeks licensure again in Nevada. Um, lastly, that all fees be paid um, before he's, before he's able to be issued a license or if there's a payment plan established with the director. Okay, and the last thing I just want to clarify for the commissioners and make sure I'm understanding it. He, he skirted the test, so we never really did test his urine. We only know what he verbally said, that he did marijuana the night before. We don't really know that to be true or not. That is 100% correct, Chairman. There may be nothing in his actual urine or there could be okay. anabolic steroids. It's Got it. speculative. We, we just don't know. Okay. Are there any uh, questions of the Attorney General? And I would, after that, I'll just close it and we can deliberate real quick. Executive Director Beth? Yes, Chairman, just an additional notice, as noted in the affidavit by uh, Inspector Alex E. Barr. Uh, Mr. McKenzie uh, initially was requested to take the test, and uh, he refused to take the test and went back up into his room and came back several hours later just as a uh, friendly reminder to come, back, come down and then take the test and then obviously try to uh, take it in an unacceptable manner. Understood. Thank you. Is this Mr. McKenzie's first offense? That I'm aware of. Um, that I can say definitively without documentary evidence. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? I have, um, actually have a question for Executive Director Bennett. Um, the urine test was um, occurring right before, or the night of his fight, right, in September? That's correct. And so was he, he did not fight that night? He did not. Correct. Correct. Okay. And this been from that from the purse part of the discussion. 
I just think, I think there's a complete disregard to the protocol of what this sport's about. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think that uh, Mr. McKenzie has is, is dug a deep hole. So, uh, in, in my personal opinion, whatever the max is that we can do, I, I would suggest that the other commissioners vote in favor of doing that. That's my, my thoughts. Okay. Thoughts from you? So we're closing. Yeah, we're, right. unless anybody right. has any other questions right. for the Attorney General, we'll right. go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with Commissioner Ball. If he went to great length <laughs> to just kind of skirt the process, um, this point it was the most egregious statement or behavior I think that I've seen so far in a statement from an inspector um, at this point. So. Okay. How many other drug tests have he passed? I do not have information from the commissioner. Okay. Yeah, I guess you know, not knowing how many drug tests he did pass and if this, this is an aberration, he got scared, made a bad decision. I agree with the other commissioners pretty bad decision to make, but if he's passed all the other tests and this is an aberration, uh, I think that should be considered as well. My experience with athletes is that they know the rules. They understand what has to be done, and uh, certainly a lot of them try to find shortcuts. But the disrespect of not yielding to take the test, and I, I just, uh, you know, I don't think there's any second answer to where this commission should suggest or should go? Yeah, clearly a bad decision. Yeah, the comments that I would provide, I guess, to the commission, I concur. Um, I think there's really three three things here. One is um, obviously the fighter had concern about their urine, or they wouldn't have tried to cheat the test. And cheating the test is as is as bad as it gets, uh, with especially with our new regulations and how they were written to work with that. But then part three is this whole process to come before us um, in any which way you can feel comfortable doing it. You have an avenue to settle, you have an avenue to reach out, communicate with the Attorney General, you have an, a, a, an avenue to finally come to the realization that you've made a mistake and you can admit it and work your way through it to try to get some reduction in your sentencing. But when you cheat the sport, cheat the test, and completely no-show your own hearing, to try to defend yourself, apologize, or whatever it may be, to me that's where you go from any leniency to the straight max. Because <laughs> every, every one of those things and every one of those opportunities to, to try to do the right thing and have that moment of, uh, you know, to just reconcile what's happened. So none of that has happened, the opportunity has been given. So uh, I think at this point, uh, I'm in full support of the max. I would, would entertain a motion for whatever range uh, the commission deems appropriate. And if I may briefly, if the commission is um, entertaining the enhancement for aggravating circumstances, I believe the motion uh, would have to include a finding of aggravating circumstances um, for, to, to include that as part of the sentence or discipline. So why don't we start off there? I guess we, we can start off with, does the commission, uh, would the commission or commissioners like to make a motion to find uh, the defendant, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, guilty of aggravating circumstances in this case. Let's start with, with that. I'd like to, to propose that we find him. Uh, you have to make a motion for that, Commissioner. That his actions. Make a motion that his actions were what? Aggravating, sir, that there were uh, aggravating Certainly aggravating, aggravating circumstances without question. Sorry. Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye. Great. Motion passed unanimously. So, second, then, would be, uh, if, would be, um, I think we would enter, we would look for a motion that would uh, give the max penalty under the uh, skirting of the test or the, the trying to provide a false test and the aggravating circumstances, which would be two years and two years, which would be four years. Uh, a fine of nine, I'm sorry, it's no fine because there was no contest. Uh, $944.84 in attorney reimbursement fees and test 30 days, 15 and 10 out uh, after the four years uh, has been has been uh, done. Uh, that would be correct, Chairman. 30, 15, and three days out. 30, 15, and three, okay. If so should amendment, to that, amendment to that would be 30, 15, and three. So I think that based on the dialogue, we would need a motion. Uh, so moved. For that. As articulated by uh, Chairman Warnell. 
Okay, a second? Second. Great. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Great. Motion passes unanimously. I thank the commission.